Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for March 7th, 2019. I'm teaching a series entitled Press Through It. We've been looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11 for a few days now. I want to go back to that passage again this morning with a message entitled, You Won't Always Know what to do. Here's a newsflash. If you're a believer, if you're going to be the man, the woman that God called you to be, you won't always know what to do. You are not always going to have all the answers. So let's, let's get that from the word of God this morning. So this is what the apostle Paul said in this passage. He says, we have this treasure from God. Now we are only like clay jars that hold the treasure. This is to show that the amazing power that we have is from God and not from us. Now we have troubles all around us, but we're not defeated. We often don't know what to do, (laughs) but we don't give up. We are persecuted, but God does not leave us. We are hurt sometimes, but we're not destroyed. So we constantly experience the death of Jesus in our own bodies. Why, Paul? He says, this is so that the life of Jesus can be seen in our own bodies. We are alive, but for Jesus, we are always in danger of death so that the life of Jesus can be seen in our own bodies. That's the goal, that when people come in contact with you, You want them to come in contact with Jesus. The Bible says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. So I want to focus on this statement this morning where it says, we often don't know what to do, (laughs) but we don't give up. See, the truth is that if you want to walk with God in earnest, right? If you want to live the life of faith, then you are going to be in situations where you don't know what to do. And this is true because between the enormity of what God has called you to do, and the strength of Satan's opposition, you're going to just find yourself in situations where you're searching for answers. This is why you have to get comfortable with a certain level of discomfort in order to maximize your purpose and potential while you're in the land of the living. So what does this mean to you today? What does this message mean to you? I have six things to share with you this morning. So as I get into these six things, I want you now to free yourself Free your heart, free your mind of all distractors. Open up your heart to what God is saying. While I'm speaking, there will be a voice behind my voice. There will be word, a word behind my word. That's the Holy Spirit. So open up your heart now to hear the Holy Spirit through me. Six things. You ready? Here we go. Number one, you know you are truly living by faith and believing. No, let me say it this way. You know you're truly living by faith when you are actually believing and attempting the humanly impossible. When when what is humanly impossible seems normal to you. You know your mind is renewed when the supernatural seems logical. When it seems logical, right? Where, where when somebody says, Oh, last night in church and Bible study, um, someone walked in who couldn't hear in their left ear for the last 20 years because of some accident. And such and such laid hands on them and they poop, they heard a pop and their ear open and now they can hear. And you say, oh, okay, praise God, you know, cool. When that seems cool to you, when that seems logical, when that seems normal to you, when the supernatural, the humanly impossible seems like the norm, now you know that you are finally at the point where you are living the life of faith. But just know that when you get to this point, you, you are going to be constantly drawn beyond the limits of your humanity. And, and when you are, there will be times where it is uncomfortable. Because while your spirit is saying yes to God, your flesh is saying, hold on, hold on. I want, I, your, your, your natural man is a lot more comfortable with things that it can validate with physical senses. And your spirit is always being drawn into this realm that you cannot validate. Which leads me to Hebrews 11 and 1. So point number two, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of the things that we cannot see. It's like God is, is when you live by faith, you, are, you have an assurance of something that you can't validate with your five physical senses. And so there's no sense realm evidence to validate what God said. There's no sense realm evidence to validate what God is leading you to do. And so while your spirit is saying, yes, let's go do it. Your physical man is saying, no, don't do that because your physical man would much rather just do things that you can validate with your physical senses so that you can have a peace about it. Matter of fact, if it's something that you can't validate with your senses, then we say, oh, that doesn't make sense. When we say, 
oh, that makes sense. That means that's something that is normal to this world that can be validated, that can be proven out by science, that can be validated, you know, through human possibility. But when it's something that is beyond human, we say, oh, that doesn't make sense. And, and God is a spirit. So he's not sensical. He's spiritual. He doesn't call us the things that make sense. And so to live by faith, you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. You got to get you got to be okay with, with things that you will not be able to validate with your five physical senses. And so God is going to call you. God will tell you to tithe and say, take a 10% of your income and sow it into this ministry. And when you're writing a check to the church, you're not really giving it to the church. You're giving it to the, to me. And I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have not uh, room enough to receive it. And so, so I'm, I'm giving to this ministry, but I'm not really giving to this ministry. I'm giving to God. So I'm not going to put it in the bucket and then watch the bucket as it goes to the back of the church and wonder where it's going. It doesn't matter because I sowed it into God. And, and, and that, ugh, I can't validate that with my senses, but I know, I believe that in my heart. And so God has called us to the uncomfortable. God is calling us to the to a certain level of discomfort, and we have to be okay with that. And we're not always going to have all the answers. See, number three, there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. And if you're the type of person who, like I used to be, but if you're the type of person, and I know a lot of these people, if you're if you're the type of person that needs all the answers up front, right before you make a decision, then you are going to have a hard time walking with God, because God is not going to give you all the answers up front. If God gave you all the answers up front, then you can make a logical decision, but then that, that would require no faith. I mean, so what's the good in that? God has called us, commands us to walk and live by faith. And so, so to live by faith, God is not going to tell you everything. He, he, he will refuse to do it. God will not tell you everything that you want to know, everything that you think you need to know. So there will be times when you have no clue what to do. You won't even know what God is up to. And during those times, you have to trust God. When it's all said and done, God's plans and his kingdom purposes will prevail and they are going to be good. And you have to believe that. Number four, when I don't, I'm gonna just make it personal for me. When I don't know what to do, and I don't have a clue what God is up to, I can have peace in knowing this. God loves me. And because God loves me and God is a good God and every good and perfect gift comes from, from him, then I often tell people, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but what I do know is going to be good. And so, so I know it's going to be good. Why? Because God is a good God and he loves me and he made plans for me from the foundations of the world. So I, maybe I don't know. I trust God even when I can't trace him, when I don't know what he's doing, when I don't know what he's up to, when I don't know what to do, I just find peace in knowing that God loves me. His plans are good. It's going to work out for my good. When it's all said and done, it's going to be better than anything I could have come up with on my own. So God is good. I'm at peace with it. I keep going. That's why Paul said, when you don't know what to do, don't give up. Just keep going. It's going to work out for your good. Number five, true faith requires a departure from the safety of human possibility. Oh man. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to just remain within the confines of human possibility, but God is calling you to the supernatural. God is calling you to experience his best. And for you to experience his best, you got to develop the courage to leave the confines and the comfort of your normal routine. You must have the courage to break away from the safety that is found in doing things that you doing things that you already know what to do, right? So if, if you just always did the things that you already know how to do, then, then, then there's no excitement in that. The life of faith, man, is, is, is exciting because you just never know what God is going to do. Glory to God. And so God is, is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think or even imagine according to the power that works on the inside of us. God is always doing something new. But for you to experience something new, you have to have the courage to let go of the now so you can lay hold of the next. Let me say that again. You have to have the courage. Look at me. You need courage to let let go of the now to lay hold of the next. Yes, appreciate the now, but God has something in the next that he wants you to open up your heart to. And you can't lay hold of the next if you won't let go of the now. You got to open up your heart to what God is saying in this season to experience his best. Number six, and finally, to experience all of what God has called you to accomplish while you're in the earth, while you're in the land of the living. You got to be comfortable with a certain level of discomfort you got to be comfortable with the uncertain, right? So when you break away from the certainty of what you know, you open up your heart to the certainty of what God has already planned. 
So while it may be uncertain to me, I know that it is not uncertain to God. So it is uncertain to me, but it is certain to him. And I trust him enough to open up my heart to whatever is certain to him and uncertain to me. I am comfortable with a certain level of discomfort. I, I know that there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. And I'm going to follow you, Father, even when I don't know what you're doing, even when I don't know what to do. I refuse to give up. I refuse to cave in. I refuse to quit. I'm going to press through it. I'm going to keep going. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you now to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say this. Say, Father, I thank you for calling me to a life of faith. I am the just. I live by faith. I live by every word you reveal to me. I base my decisions on what you say, even when I cannot validate what you said with my five physical senses. I live beyond the natural. The supernatural is now natural to me. I am comfortable with a certain level of discomfort and mystery. When I don't know what to do, I keep my eyes on you. I trust you, even when I don't know what's going on. And in the end, I know it's going to be good. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button. There's a subscribe button there. You're going to get an email from me with all my notes. Everything I just said is going to be an email form in your inbox for free. So sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I'm telling you, head into this day encouraged, knowing that even if you don't know what to do, God is with you. God is on you. God is for you. There's no way you can lose. Even when you don't know what he's up to, you got to trust that it's good, that it's going to work out for you. It's going to be better than anything you could have come up with on your own anyway. So trust God, keep going, never give up, never cave in, never quit. And do me a favor, before you leave the screen, please share this message on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. I love you and God loves you. Go out there and be comfortable with the uncertain. God bless you.